As part of its commitment to ensure that Nigerians, regardless of their social and political class, are identified for life, the management team of the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, has issued the National EID card to former President General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida at his MENA residence. For us, what this represents is an attempt, an effort to use um, uh, elder statesmen to help us in, in, in further, um, if you like, selling the concept to the citizenry uh, in an effort to ensure that people go to the designated locations to get enrolled. And when you get your SMS, you go to the designated location to collect your card. Following the card issuance, the former president who was visibly impressed by the card and its applications noted that the card will no doubt help reduce the security challenges by the present administration. This makes me proudly in I want to commend and congratulate the commission for it hasn't been easy for all of you, but I know you will eventually get there. He also expressed gratitude that the card was issued to him while he was alive and can still make use of its features and called on every Nigerian to ensure that they enroll for the national identification number, NIN. I'm proud I have this one and I'm still alive. And uh, please keep it up. And for those who have not succeeded in enrolling, try to make sure you do it fast. I think there is something to be very proud of of the citizen of this country. And if there is something that confirms you are one, that makes you prouder. So congratulations. The Director General of the Commission, Barrister Chris Oyemenam, who gave an overview of the functions of the National EID card, also noted that the Commission is the central issuing authority for the foundation identity in the country. A very, very um, briefly put, the National Identity Management Commission is implementing the National Identity Management System, which has five components. One of, uh, one of the five components is the card issuance scheme. Uh, the data capture and making sure you capture that data in line with global best practice and international standards prescribed for government identity tokens is one component. The second is that you ensure that you uniquely identify individuals in a manner that once it's done, it's done for life. And you put it in a central identity information repository that is then used for several other Things. And one of the things it is used for is the third component of the, of the, uh, the national identity management system, which is the card scheme that I talked about. Uh, the fourth one is the ability to deploy that database and or the card or the number that you uniquely assign to individuals to perform identity verification at different levels and at different times, whether it is at the bank when you go to cash a check or at the airport when you want to board uh, the flight or at the insurance company uh, at the hotel when you want to uh, uh, check into uh, a room. The last one, which is the fifth uh, component, is what we call the harmonization and integration, in which case you are saying that there is a basic central identity data repository from where all other government institutions and private sector institutions can take a cue. Uh, the international passport is issued by only one institution in this country, DITO for driver's license, pension, you know, there are established institutions. It is in the same sense that the National Identity Management Commission is the central issuing authority 
for what you can call the foundation or the base identity, which can then be utilized by any other institution to issue any other form of functional identity so that we will all be reading from the same page of the hymn book. The hymn book being the repository that the commission has provided. He also called on the private sector to come on board to make the eID card project a huge success. To make sure that the MMM okay. solution okay. called National Identity Management System is in place and is working. The technical viability, the financial viability, the operational viability have all been proven. The government decided to ensure that the enrollment centers are out there. It's my hope and expectation that at some point the private sector people come into the picture. If they don't, the way government is going, we are 404 now. We, we have 330 to go. And when we then include the state offices and the other special locations, it will then be something like 226 in addition to that. So somewhere like 450, 560 branches. And we can do it. The NIMSI management team proceeded to inspect the NIMSI critical infrastructure in the States.